Good morning. Good morning. Here we are. Our first one of day two. Yeah. Yeah. Super excited to have this conversation. Uh, We met Mike yesterday. That's right. uh, Briefly. And uh, he was more than excited to join us this morning. So we're excited to to hear what he's got to say. Mike, if you would, real quick, self-introduction. Just give us your name, who you're with, and what you do. My name is Mike Horton. I'm the project creator of the GeoNet Network, which is the uh, world's largest RTK network featuring over 9,500 base stations. And it's a really unique RTK network in that it is a user-contributed network. So anyone can set up a GeoNet reference station, add it to the network, and um, that's how we've been over in two years, able to grow to have coverage throughout North America and Europe and over 9,000 stations. I am very intrigued by this. This sounds like the perfect solution for a lot of people. It works really well in yeah. that um, people who need coverage can can get it. Um, but there's also a big kicker to the whole thing is that when you buy and set up uh, a qualified GeoNet station mm-hmm. from one of our 13 distributors, you start to earn money from that. You earn actually a cryptocurrency. Really? A GOD token. And the GOD token has done really well, and it's been really a popular project um, in the Web3 crypto sphere. So we have kind of two communities that set up stations, both traditional, <laughs> what we call Web2 uh, hosts, which are the so folks in agriculture, drones, surveying that are setting up stations to cover areas that they work in. And then they want other people to be able to have access to that data but also people who are really in it from the crypto mining aspect. They call it satellite mining. You're literally setting up a satellite mining station and mining the various constellations, whether it's GPS, <laughs> Monas, Beto, Galileo. And then that mining station becomes part of the RTK network. And so that's in, encouraged a lot of enthusiasts in the, in the sort of crypto mining space to join into a geospatial revolution. This is amazing. I know, right? <laughs> We're not going to get, 10 minutes is not going to be enough for this one. We got a lot to talk about. Um, so you, how, how long has it been in existence? Did you say two years? Just a little over two years. Okay. And how so many, 90, you said 9,000, 9, 500, I think it's 9,570 I saw on the console today. About 150 new stations get added a week. Oh, whoa. That's insane. And what percentage of that is those in the, in the crypto mining space versus the, you call those more organic yeah. Ads. So the organic stations have been increasing as the network has started to get more and more users, you know, like partnerships like Bad Elf um, have, have really helped uh, the network. So um, and, and some of Bad Elf's customers have deployed stations, for example, is a, is a good uh, example in the, uh, in, in the, in the Web2 space. Another example, Deep Sand, which does a lot of auto steering systems for farmers throughout North America. Okay. They've had, they have about 200 stations have gone up through their network. So it's a good part. That part's growing, but to date, the bulk has been people who are interested in earning GOD crypto parts. Yeah. And that, you know, put it in perspective, there are, I think, 100 million registered Coinbase accounts. So there are an awful lot of people interested in crypto parts. Right, right. And, um, you know, it's a really good way to make use of the real estate, the internet connection you have. If you have a home without too many trees and a clear sky view, you can set a station up. If you're in an empty, what we call a hex, which is an area that doesn't have a station, you can set a station up and start earning uh, the GOD token. Really? I, I think we found your uh, your next career. Yeah. Maybe we did. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so we'll talk about the coverage as it currently exists. So the coverage is the strongest in Europe and North America. Um, and I think in Europe, we're closing in on very complete coverage of co- all continental Europe. There are a few holes left here and there in places like France that we've been working on filling. But, uh, you know, kind of here in Germany, I mean, I think there's two, three hundred stations plus in the, in Germany. Uh, I've, been, I've tested the network some here, working perfectly. Um, and even it's in the Eastern Europe now, very, very dense coverage uh, network. The United States is a big country with a lot of open spaces. We have a little more work to go there. In the United States, we have great coverage in all the major metropolitan areas um, and and a good bit of the rural areas in North America, especially where there's farming. We have coverage, but there's, you know, Nevada, which is like 90% desert. There's there's open area in there. So if you go in the middle of Nevada, you're probably not going to get RTK yet. Might be a while. Um, but if I can get a good internet signal to my my desert house in the middle of Nevada, I can, can start. Earn, yeah, I can earn. earn. In fact, some of these rural places we have incentives. So, a standard GeoNet hex, if it's empty and you set up a good station and um, it performs well today, you'd be earning twenty four tokens a day. And the tokens are uh, twenty five cents right now at the moment. 
they, they change. The total price moves all over the place. Sure. But, um, so, but if you go into a region where we have an incentive, where we, where we have what's called a super hex, where we're pushing to get more coverage, it can be double that. Um, so you could be earning 48 tokens a day. Um, Interesting. You can do the math on that. Yeah, so, that yeah. is freaking cool. So what are the requirements to be able to uh, you know, have uh, a station at your, at your home or business or whatever? So th- there are not many. It's permissionless. The main thing is you have to have a qualified piece of hardware. So every uh, GeoNet base station is a, has a crypto chip in it that certifies the data. So we make sure that people aren't trying to put fake stations in to earn our hmm, cryptocurrency. Sure. And if, you know, it's a triple frequency, uh, four constellation receiver. So it's getting all that. It's NGS calibrated antenna. That's got a good mounting kit that goes with it. So it helps people make sure they get a good installation. And then we take a look at the signals. And so your token rewards um, are one based on being an empty hex. Um, if you're in a hex that has many stations, you'll be splitting it unless you were the first station in there that had good performance. And then you can lock your rewards. Otherwise, if you come in later, you're going to be sharing rewards. Okay. With other people. So let's assume you came into an empty, an empty hex, you set up a station, then you can be earning the full rewards. And uh, the only thing that would reduce your, your, your token rewards would be if the signal... If you're not getting all the satellites and the signal has too much multipath um, hmm. or you're having internet outages. And, and so all of those things will lead to reductions. We call it um, recurring rewards rate. And uh, that's available. You can see it on our console. So if you go to console.geonet.com slash map, you'll see the map of all the stations. And you can click on any station. You can see how they're doing, how they're performing. You can see all the signals from Galileo, Beto, um, GPS, clone apps, all that, and you can see, you know, how that performance of that station is. What about the internet speed? Do you, does that need to have a? Not really. I mean, you think about it's as uh, you know. Obviously, we want good internet connections. Latency is important, but you know, a normal internet connection is more than enough. A, a, a GeoNet station uploads 15 gigabytes of data a month. So you uh, divide that okay. out. Yeah, it's like twenty kilobits a second. It's not. It's not yeah. going to affect your YouTube streaming, right? You're right. Not, okay. You're not. It's not RTK data, GNSS raw data. It's not that high of bandwidth. Gotcha. So the main thing is like a good continuous connection. Um, so you know, if your router is on a UPS, that might be a little better. If there's some power outages in in your house occasionally, but most places in North America, you know, internet is pretty stable, and that's not really an issue. You go. We have stations in Africa, Latin America. This becomes much more of a challenge. And we depend on, you know, the grid and the internet services there just are not the same reliability. So one of the things we've been working on, it's really exciting, is a off-grid Starlink base station. So it's going to have two 400-watt solar panels, eight lead-acid car batteries, and a tower. And you can set this thing up and it should run autonomously uploading the data over Starlink anywhere that Starlink has coverage without any grid connection. And we think this is going to be actually be more reliable than tying into the grid in some of the third world countries where right. yeah. you know, power outages happen like kind of daily. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. and, it, and it's not you know, isolated. It can be like pretty wide area that can yeah. use power. Right. So it's even hard to do a redundancy in that case because yeah. redundancy may be, you know, the, the whole regional area may be out for three hours a day, and and that's just it's just tough. So we think Starlink's a super interesting solution. It also gets us yeah. get onto islands and places that have traditionally just not had an in trip stream available. Well, we can provide it. Interesting. So what's the goal? So the goal is to provide ubiquitous RTK coverage. So anywhere you know RTK now, you've got to think about hey, I've got to turn on. Um, you know, I got to go log in. I got to figure out it, who's my course provider. Is there a course provider? What signals does he have? Is it going to be compatible with my receiver in terms of the constellations tracked? Get an account, set it up. It's a pain. What we want to do is have RTK everywhere on the planet. So <laughs> if I have a GPS, I can get RTK. Everybody can enjoy some new actors. And that's going to help, obviously, people in surveying in the traditional communities. But the big thing is consumer applications. Mm. So we're partnered up with a lot of like people in robotic lawnmowers. And yeah, you know, okay. I think car navigation, ultimately, why not have some meter accuracy? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to know what lane you should be in? Right? All these things that precise GPS can enable will happen if there's a good signal that's ubiquitously available. It's just too complicated today. Too many small networks, yeah. logins, right. this and that. Yes. Some of them are quite expensive. 
it, 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 having a mass market available network is good. And we're doing it internet style. Think about how the internet's built. There's not one server somewhere. It's like DNS, right? It's a, it's a protocol, a collection of servers that form the internet uh, collectively. We're basically building a protocol to connect our TK stations so that the network can grow without, you know, one company sort of <laughs> running the whole project. Anybody can add a station. The station you put the station up. The next day, if it's well installed, it'll be in the RTK network. Did we do anything? No. A protocol took care of providing PPP, calculating the precise point, figuring out if the station meets the quality metrics to enter into RTK service. All that happens autonomously. No human involvement. That mm-hmm. makes the network very scalable um, yeah. and, and and growable. So it sounds like this is a subscription model. It is for the user side. So okay. on the mining side, if you're a data provider, you're actually getting tokens. So you're earning. And if you're using, yes, you're going to pay into a, a provider like we bat alpha will resell GeoNet subscriptions. The foundation doesn't directly do it. We work through partners in, in at the Synergy. Oh, we have many. Yes. You know, probably half a dozen people who are already using GeoNet and reselling it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those people do it under their own brand. They use the network in order to provide their RTA services. They make money from that. They share okay. a part of that money back with the foundation. The foundation then in turn use that capital to buy back tokens. And to incentivize to people incentivize and then, the, and then the, the cycle it, right? continues. And when those tokens are bought back, they're actually sent to what's called the burn address, which means they're removed from circulation. So it's a highly deflationary protocol. As tokens are mined, tokens are burned. Because people use it. Because there's an uh, end, there's an end game. Eventually, you have coverage everywhere, yep. and you don't want to make it, you know, infinite. Like, yeah. So it, it, as the coverage fills up and the hexes fills up, if you if you bring in additional miners into a crowded hex, you're not going to earn. Right. right. So you, yeah. that that there's a geographic constraint, and then there's also a need to keep the supply and the demand in balance. I mean, imagine if there are a thousand Airbnbs in a city and nobody visited the city. Well, no one who is putting their their homes on Airbnb would make any money. So you got to have that supply and demand. So we control the amount of supply through the geographic constraints. And then we work to build the foundation works to market. That's why we have a booth here and educating people on GeoNet. We work to generate demand, which generates revenue. And that revenue then flows back essentially through token burning, through token repurchase and burning back to the people who are running the stations. And hopefully, you know, the token price goes up. I mean, it's not stable because it's crypto, right? Sometimes a lot of people want to sell. Sometimes a lot of people want to buy. There's that factor as well. But in general, there's a forcing function, a steady forcing function of people using the network, uh, which is causing the repurchase of tokens. And I can can assume, correct me if I'm wrong, but the fact that it, there is an incentive for miners and there's an actual tangible thing associated with it. It causes people to get into oh, and want to buy and trade. And that's what absolutely. causes some of the volatility, absolutely. right? Absolutely. I'm sitting here with a smile on my face. <laughs> this is so <laughs> genius, <laughs> right? Right. Well, I love the lawnmower example of like, uh, yeah, if you really exactly. wanted to, to mow a bunch of grass autonomously, yeah. you needed to know where that is. You grab a, you know, this is the flex the bad out flex this is bad out flex this is a great receiver for setting up the map for a mower so you could use yeah. this guy and it set your boundary load it up into the mower and, and then the get mower. your subscription yep. you know and you'll have i mean relatively accurate enough for the lawnmower to do what you need to do and it's you're off and running that's amazing <laughs> i'm i'm so impressed um so how do people find out more geodnet.com um and we can follow us on social channels we have a linkedin and a uh twitter account or x account as it's called these days but primarily uh, i'd recommend geodnet.com g-e-o-d-n-e-t.com and you can find all about there um and welcome people to set up rtk stations and welcome people we have free in-trip accounts for a trial so nice. you can get a 30-day account give it a try yeah um we've had many many happy users um, who, who find, hey, you know, Bad Elf had some guys in Wyoming the other day that couldn't find a network, um, created some accounts for them, and they were yeah. often surveying. So it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's really super cool to have so much coverage and so much availability of a valuable service like RTK. Yeah, so that's really cool. One last Amazing. question before I let you go. Is there a company here, or is there a company making the Starlink solar-powered autonomous unit that you can stick anywhere and fill in that gap of coverage? Yeah, so um, the company HiFix.ai is working on it, um, and you can reach out to them. Um, I've been involved in the design of it myself, looking at um, 
looking at it, uh, how to how to build it, and we're going to have a prototype of it at the um, Ag Robotics Show in um, where is that show? Sacramento, yeah, Ag Robotics Show in Sacramento coming up in late October, and huh? hope to start fielding these things in um, early 2025. It's a big unit. It's a uh, you know the 400 watt solar panels are about three feet by two feet. There are two of those, and then there's a cabinet. That's uh, and the tower is attached to the cabinet. It looks kind of like the lunar lander. Yeah, that's what I that's what I envisioned. You know, <laughs> sitting there, and this is some rough country too. So yeah, you gotta have you know, country. it's not uh, interesting. Well, I think it's gonna be very enabling for things like agricultural robotics, where you know a robot um, needs to stay internet connected, so it needs internet and it needs RTK. So this is kind of like a gateway that you can plant somewhere, right? Um, we're looking at other payloads we can put up on the tower, including like a weather station, pan tilt camera, a sort of a little autonomous spot, create, create some internet bubble, yeah. create an RTK bubble, get yeah. some other data and, and, you know, bring that to anywhere on the planet that you want or anywhere the Starlink covers, which is almost anywhere on the planet. That's pretty cool. I, I think we need to have Mike back on for like a full show. I think so. I think there, so. I have so many more questions. Well, I think we're going to get some questions from this, uh, I, this I segment. But, Absolutely. Uh, well, Mike, thank you so much for your yeah, time. This appreciate is great. it. Super. Really, well, really appreciate it. Great energy, Owen. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Mind the sky.